I doubt Dovetail's watching these videos. I would love to be on the beta team. I know I'm a little critical, but I would love to be on the beta team. My business email is down in the description. <laughs> I'm kidding. Actually, I'm not kidding. Hey, real fans, welcome back to the channel. I don't know about you guys, but my excitement for Train Sim World 4 is definitely building. We are a couple of days away now from early access. It's 10.48 p.m. on Monday as I'm filming this, and this will likely go up on Tuesday the 19th, which means by that point, we'd be roughly 48 hours away from the release of Train Sim World 4. And that is the release for early access. If you pre-order the deluxe edition, if you pre-order the special, edition with that you're going to get the flying scotsman you're going to get the vectron and of course the pre-order bonus i don't remember what else comes with that special or deluxe edition i think we also get the soundtrack for either of those i'm hoping it's either of those but i'm excited guys we're getting ready to dive into another train sim world 4 dev diary this one is titled new lands and locos so without further ado let's see what it's giving Welcome back to our Train Sim World 4 Dev Diaries, where we'll be talking about all of the things that we've done to help develop and create the world of Train Sim World 4. This is the part where I pause it and talk about things that I completely forgot to mention when I start the video. So I watched the stream today, okay? Well, first I want to mention I watched the Vectron stream. I don't really have much to say about it other than the fact that I think that Loco is beautiful. It's amazing. I'm happy with almost everything about it. Literally everything, actually. I don't think there's a single thing that I wasn't happy with. Super excited about that. They did reveal, not during that stream, but previously, that the Vectron will be available for separate purchase just as a DLC, but I'm pretty sure that isn't happening until sometime in October. I'm not sure of the exact date, but the Loco looks amazing. Very, very, very impressed. So the other thing that I wanted to mention, and this was from today's stream, Monday, September the 18th, they showed off free roam mode and not just free roam, you know, the game mode where you go in and there's not a single train on the route. You're the only one. You can spawn whatever you want, wherever you want, and take it absolutely wherever you want. But they also showed off free roam integrated into service mode or timetable mode and how the AI dispatcher kind of works you in with the timetable, makes you wait, makes other trains wait, and they are essentially giving you the freedom to wreak havoc on the timetable, of course, if you so very wish. This is something that I am so excited about. And, you know, on my wish list for service mode for a very long time was the ability to have random events, random delays, random things happen that give us more replay value. You know, I'm tired of going in, playing through the timetables, but there's really no variation with them unless you cause your own delays. For example, sometimes I'll load into a service, I'll let it sit for an hour, block up every train that was supposed to use my track. When the little pop-up appears asking me, do you want to give up the service? I hit yes. I let things get moving and then I jump into one of the services that I originally held up and then follow behind all those other trains and kind of act like the line has been delayed. You know, there are issues along the route. I'm chasing signals. Whereas usually if you play through these services, you're going to get the same outcome every time unless you inflict some sort of delay into the timetable yourself. But now with with this ability to spawn trains in, it's actually kind of insane because every time you play, every time you spawn a train down, a service down in different parts of the route during different times of the day, you're going to get a different outcome with what kind of signals you get if you have to wait or not. It's kind of insane and I could go on for an hour talking about how much I like this, but I would rather you guys just go watch the stream. If you haven't watched the stream, the replay of it should be up on Train Sim World Forge channel, but I am just kind of blown away about it. Like, I feel like I'm very critical of this game, very critical of Dovetail games, but this is kind of one area that I cannot complain in. This is something that I have been asking for, more replay value. And them adding this is giving us that replay value. Every time you play service mode and you spawn things down and you just do what you want, you're just going to get a different experience every single time. So now that I've gotten that out of the way, God, I feel like I could just go on forever talking about that sort of thing. It just excites 
me so much and I'm already looking forward to the content that I'm going to make, the videos and the streams that I'm going to host where we just go into service mode and we place down trains and we just do random things and see what happens. What signals are we going to get? Change our destination, change our waypoints, go into yards, pick up trains, leave the yards, go back on the main line. What trains are going to pass us? Will we have to stop at reds? Will we be chasing signals? It's like, we don't know. Every single time we do that, it's just, it's going to be a different, fun experience. And God, I'm just so excited for this to come out, honestly. All right, let's actually continue for real this time. I feel like I've been talking for like six minutes now. We haven't even started this 10 minute dev diary, but I have all day. I don't care. Today, we'll be talking about new lands and new locos. We have a new geography in Austria in Train Sim World 4, and we've also got loads and loads of new locos and trains for you to try out. So, should we find out a little bit more about them? Not me getting like super hyped for these German Austrian trains. Like I am an American rail simmer. I'm normally a fan of those trains and those routes, but literally all day today before filming this video, I've been playing on Dresden the whole day and I'm having so much fun. This route's getting ready to get a huge upgrade with Train Sim World 4. So I'm kind of playing it now in Train Sim World 3, having fun, preparing myself for the update. Unfortunately, you gotta have have train sim world 4 to get the update so you gotta pay which i hate but you know it is what it is there's nothing we can really do about it i wish it was a free update but getting that aside the update itself i'm excited for and using the vectron on that oh boy it's gonna be loads of fun in Train Sim World 4, we wanted to bring a new range of routes and trains that are different to the ones you've already got. Whether it's high speed running in the UK, taking passengers over the mountain passes in the States, or visiting a whole new country, there's something new and exciting to look at in all the content. I think that's one of the last streams left is the Azuma, right? We haven't even seen that route and that loco yet. I believe they've uploaded a little like feature highlight video clip for the Azuma. I haven't watched it yet. Maybe we can check that out when we're done this. Actually, you know what? Let's check that out now. Yeah, we've got some sounds and stuff. We have the Talent One. We have the Metrolink for Antelope Valley, the Rail Pull Vectron and the Azuma. Let's check out the Vectron first. I haven't watched these yet. I'm guessing we're going to like hear all the sounds and stuff too. God, it looks so good. The detailing. I did a great job on this. I do remember during the stream, they were blasting the horn. The horn sounded great to me. And when I say the horn sounded great, I'm not saying the horn sounds accurate. I don't feel like I have the knowledge to tell you if it's accurate or not, because I don't. But when I say it sounds great, I mean like the quality of the audio sample sounds great. It doesn't sound low quality. It doesn't sound low bit rate. It doesn't sound like it's looping. It doesn't sound like it's coming from a model toy train. It sounds good in that regard. Yeah, it sounds good. Sounds good to me. You know what still kind of pisses me off? God, I feel like we're just going to talk about everything but this dev diary that we are here to watch. I'll get back to that in a second. But what kind of pisses me off is like, and I feel like I've talked about this so many times, how neglected US content is. Like the German routes, the German trains, I feel like, yeah, there are some bugs and issues, but I feel like there aren't as many as there are with the US stuff, of course. LZB, PZB, CIFA, all of that stuff seems to work either perfectly or almost perfectly. Whereas in the US, on the Northeast corridor, especially New York to Trenton, ATC, Access, the safety systems, their F-U-C-K-E-D. Like, they were from the start, and they still are now. Issues. Nothing works right, and it's just, it gets so tiring, you know? These other countries, these other territories, they get more attention to detail with their safety systems, signaling, all of that stuff, and then with U.S. content, it's just always an afterthought. Brandon Cactus Juice did an absolutely amazing job on signals 
almost, especially when it comes to Boston of Providence. But here's the truth. If it wasn't for Brandon, we, in terms of US and our stuff with signaling on the Northeast Corridor, it would be so bad. He like literally saves those routes. Because if it wasn't for him, the signaling on Boston of Providence would have never been fixed. And I don't believe he did signaling and stuff on New York to Trenton. I could be wrong though. Okay, we're done ranting. Let's just actually watch these videos now. <laughs> this is gonna be like a 30 minute video and we're here to watch like a 10 second clip. It's kind of ridiculous. All right, the Azuma Showcase. This one actually just came out 12 hours ago. All righty. God, it looks so good. Oh, I can't wait to play this. It looks so good, so good. Oh, we have the PIS board on the side of the train. That's really cool. See, I don't know much about UK stuff. You guys over there in England. I don't have the education levels, but I'm fascinated by your trains and I can't wait to drive them. It looks very similar to, uh, what's it called? That blue train, that purple train that's on Southeastern High Speed. I forget what that one's called. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. It looks an awfully lot like it. It's shaped very similarly. The quality of the sounds are good. Oh, wow. That did sound good. That sounded great. Yeah, that's, uh, that's for East Coast Mainline. Yeah, that sounds great as well. All right, we've got two more. I think I've seen these two, but I honestly don't remember. So we're just gonna watch them again real quick. That sounds great. Yeah, the quality of that is really good. I can't complain about it. I think it sounds great. I think it looks great. All right, we've got one more and this one is the talent one. I'm really excited for this route too, guys. The mountains, they look gorgeous. I'll say the people in this game, the characters, they always have and always will look really creepy to me. <laughs> it looks so weird. The wheels look a little weird as they're turning. Is that normal? Is that supposed to happen? I think it sounds all right. All right, yeah, I think it sounds all right. All right, we're hopping back over to the video that we're actually here to watch. Let's do it. <laughs> so with Trans and World 4, we're adding Austria as a new country. Obviously, there would have been other choices, like we could have gone to Switzerland, we could have gone to France, but Austria is, is, is special. Most of the country is, is covered in mountains. It's very scenic, it's, it's a fun little experience, and the railway is pretty nice. You start on this really scenic island Lindau next to the Bodensee. It's very lovely. And then you leave that water area behind you and go up into the mountains. So it's a, there's a very big difference between one end of the route and the other. From the flats of Germany, you go up into the mountains of Austria. And that's, that's been fun to do. To make that... Also, I want to pause this here. I doubt Dovetail's watching these videos. I would love to be on the beta team. I know I'm a little critical, but I would love to be on the beta team. My business email is down in the description. <laughs>
I'm kidding. Actually, I'm not kidding. All right, let's keep watching. It all look good. We had to do some improvements. We developed a way to get all that height information from the distance and bake it into our terrain textures so that even if you're like five to six kilometers away now, you can, you can see the details in the mountains in the background. It just makes you feel a lot more immersed when you look into the distance and you feel the mountains. It looks good, but I don't like how the trees just pop in. I don't like that. And I will probably never like that unless they can have some sort of smooth transition of the trees just slowly like fading in or something. I hate that, you know, you see half the trees on the mountain and then the top half, there's no trees. And then all of a sudden, pop, they come in. Not a fan of that. It's been a great development. The technical side is very complex. Every country has different rules, they have different trains, they have different signaling systems. So what's the difference between Austria and Germany? There's still a lot of guards on the trains, so the Talent 1 um, is heavily guard operated. They have special signals for speeds, which you kind of find on the East German signals, but not but they are being phased out in Germany, so this is something that's still special to Austria. We get this border crossing now, so there's some interesting quirks in that, where you come from Germany, have German signals, and then suddenly it's Austria. And you need to drive to different rules. Um, and I'm sure that Matt's going to do a new PowerPoint about that. It offers a relatable experience to players already in the game, but something new and different. It's new scenery to look at, new trains, new operators. Uh, so it's, it's fresh and new, but also familiar. It looks so good. You know, these dev diaries and just seeing these preview streams, I don't know what their graphics settings are at, but it's making me scared. I need a new graphics card because Trains in World 4, the volumetric clouds with Trains in World 3 kind of killed my frames. I'm not going to lie. And now we have volumetric fog and it looks amazing, but it's going to kill my graphics card. I need a new computer at this point. And I am a little nervous about it because a lot of this stuff just looks so good. And I know I am going to suffer a major performance hit. So the new Talent 1 is a, is a is the first generation talent, which we already did the Talent 2 for German content. But the, the Talent 1 comes with its own little unique quirks. It's an S-Bahn network, but it's much broader. It's, the distances are higher, so um, it, it, it's a lot harder to keep to the timetable. You have 28 stations on the route, so you're going to have to stop a lot, and that's going to be hard. <laughs> we'll make it work, all right? We'll make it work. Yeah! Let's go! Vectron! The Vectron is just power. As far as Germany goes, it's like the most modern thing we've done in a while. It's impressive. As soon as you approach it, it's obviously it's very new, so it's still shiny and the smell is there. And it's, you, you come inside and it's just, it just smells new. I like a lot of other locos we've done until now. It's, it's a lot less mechanical, so of course you still have the throttle lever and um, some buttons, but a lot is now done through the screens and we, we've gone through a lot of work to put those screens to work. You get to do a lot of things. You get to pick the countries, you get to pick the, the electrical systems, the lights, everything just works. It's, it's a different experience. It's a very powerful modern loco and Siemens is very proud of it. We went to Locomotion in, in Austria and they gave us everything. So we could do with the loco what we want. They gave us a driver to drive it around. Um, they let us, they asked us when we want to drive, where to where, and they just made it happen. And it was really good. God, this is, I'm so jealous. Like, these are the kinds of trips that I would love to go on. Like, okay, a trip to the mountains. Okay, a trip to the beach. Okay, a vacation here, vacation there. But I know that clearly this isn't a vacation. This is a work-related trip, but who cares that it's work-related? This is fun, okay? Flying out to Austria to go and take pictures and collect sounds and gather information information and data about routes and trains to implement into a simulation game absolutely amazing so jealous it looks really cool in real life though the vectron and you feel that in this product because all the sound recordings are are perfect probably woke up some people but it's all for the good of the game right <laughs> we looked at our roots and found that dresden reza was is, is really popular with, especially with the german players but obviously dresden reza is a little old now so we had to put some upgrades into that and all of the tsw4 upgrades that you can expect are going into there so you have um, the new scenario planner capabilities you're gonna have the new skies from tsw3 you're gonna have the new lighting the new fog it's uh, the new orgily it's all gonna be there we yeah. also wanted to bring the most famous steam locomotive in the world, the most popular, to the game finally, with Flying Scotsman in its 100th anniversary. 
So the Flying Scotsman is such a famous locomotive. Obviously for me, I'm a, a big steam train enthusiast, so it's really special to me being able to get up close to it and actually kind of be on the footplate of it while we were recording. It's a really special kind of locomotive to be able to put into Train Sim World 4. That was a sickening transition. Hold on, we gotta go back and watch that again. That was sick, I'm sorry. Up close to it and actually kind of be on the footplate of it while we were recording. It's a really special kind of locomotive to be able to put into <laughs> Train Sim World 4. It's got such a great history that, you know, that is what makes it so special. From an audio perspective, you know, we've had some really great access and you know we've been able to capture a lot of the flying scotsman nuances that you might you know recognize when you hear the flying scotsman out on the main line you know we're very lucky that we've had access to it on the east lancashire railway but we're also having access to it on the main line as well it's going to be really special i think in trainston world 4 and i think everyone's going to enjoy driving up and down the east coast main line Hold on, we gotta go back there a second. That shot was just gorgeous. This one right here. Man, this thing is a beast. It's beautiful. Look at the reflections on the side too, the lighting. I don't know, I saw people talking shit on this thing, saying that like it looked plasticky. We're not talking about Train Sim Classic here. Like there are actual reflections in this game. I'm sorry, this looks beautiful. Okay, Train Sim World has its cons, but the lighting and the reflections are not of those cons. I'm sorry, at least in my opinion. Up and down the East Coast mainline. Yeah, let's go! The Azuma is a very modern, it's probably one of the latest electrical multiple units here in the UK. So there's a lot of high tech gadgets, I guess you could say, maybe in, inside these trains. And being able to capture those and understand how they work, there's a lot of touchscreen stuff, you know, and making sure that we, we capture all of the, the sounds that are associated with that, it's really important. And so there's a lot of spoken words when it comes to things like TPWS, uh, one of the safety systems on the Azuma, um, which we've started to see in uh, in Train Sim World with the Class 700. So this is starting to be the new modern way of the UK. So the Azuma is starting to go that way, and it's it's a really interesting loco. There's lots going on in it. So the F125 is maybe slightly different to a lot of US locomotives that we've done before because it is a more modern diesel locomotive and so there's a lot of kind of more electrical items in the in the cabs and stuff that we have to deal with there's more up-to-date signaling systems that we capture the audio for and the f125 also has some other slight quirks in it in that the horn you know they they maybe don't sound uh, like a traditional us horn and it does sound a little bit different especially in a cab it just sounded really strange yeah it's a little bit different to, to what we, we're used to I will say there was a stream and I actually think it was this stream for this loco and for the Antelope Valley line and Matt was saying that I don't know if it was a safety system I don't know if it was a signaling system there's something that the Antelope Valley line uses and this rail operator uses that is not being implemented into the game I forget what it's called but something that should be on this train and is on this train in real life I guess in regard regards to the signals and safety systems and slowing down and all of that stuff. I forget what it is, but it's not being implemented at all. And I think it's because the game or the engine itself, it's just not something that's possible for them. And I guess this kind of goes back to what I was mentioning earlier, where I feel like yet once again, like, yeah, they say it's something that's not possible, but I feel like US content once again gets the short end of the stick. Like, I feel like if it was something that wasn't possible with UK, either they wouldn't put the train in the game or they would find a way to make it work or they would figure out what to do but when it comes to us content it's either an afterthought or they just leave it out or it's put in and it's buggy and broken a la atc and access on the northeast corridor just my opinion again a little critical here but i don't know maybe i'm just a little frustrated about it because i feel like these things you know they just never get fixed and i wouldn't be surprised if they're already working on either extending the, one of the northeast corridor routes that we have and making it longer hopefully 
Philly, we see an extension from Trenton to Philly. So we have New York to Philly, or who knows, maybe we have the Boston to Providence going down to New London or even New Haven, or maybe there's a whole new leg of Northeast Quarter coming. They're clearly going to make another one because they seem like very profitable routes, profitable US routes, mind you. And I'm just thinking if either of those things happen, whether it's a Northeast Quarter extension or a new Northeast Quarter route, I wouldn't be surprised if it was either or both. Will ATC and Access still be broken or will they finally work right or will something else not work? There's just so many questions. I feel like I constantly go back to talking about that, but I guess my point is a little bit of disappointment here with this route on this loco because of that. I forget what it is. It's some sort of safety system though, I think that they're just leaving out completely. It's just too hard to implement, I think they said, which I can understand that, but it doesn't make it any less disappointing, you know? So when we capture a lot of this stuff or uh, get a lot of sounds for um, the locos that we create, we use a, a real mix. We will, where possible, go and capture everything ourselves. So for the likes of LA and the F125, we've captured all of that ourselves. For the likes of the Azuma, we captured everything we could from Edinburgh. Um, but we have also used some of our partners to you know, use some of the audio from them. But we do use the community as well. We have a great team, a uh, great beta team that they help us out and they're full of knowledge, full of passion. Um, and they actually help provide us with some audio as well. So it's really great. Principal I would love to be on that. <laughs> I feel like I'm just gonna shamelessly say that over and over again. I just sound desperate at this point. I'm not really desperate, but it would be awesome. And the reason why I'm honestly so open to it is because I'm so passionate about this game. And you know, I work from home. I do content creation full time on multiple channels. I have a lot of time to play and test and give feedback. And I'm active on the forums. I'm active on the different pages on social media. I'm active here on YouTube. So I honestly feel like I would be a pretty good fit, honestly speaking, but I'd love to like test things out and give my feedback and all of that stuff. It would be pretty awesome. It'd be an awesome, awesome experience. Well, for development has been different to any of the ones we've developed previously. The team have actually been quite energized and engaged in what they can bring new to the experience. It is really, really difficult to pick a single thing to be really proud of. There's so much great stuff to play with. The game has changed in so many different ways. Me working with German content, that's my home turf, right? I know, I know how it works. I know what there is. I have a lot of friends who drive German trains, who work on the German railway. It makes it very easy. But at Doftel, I'm also confronted with trains from all over the world. And that's also a new learning experience for me every time. That's hard because details like that in a lot of countries are kept, kept, they're kept like great secrets. <laughs> but it's also really fun because like playing detective for work is, is, a, is a fun job. So why should you be excited about Turns of World 4? It, it brings a lot, of, a lot more freedom to you. It just feels better. It feels more real. And that's what I'm looking forward to. I want a game that feels more real. I want the realism. I want the immersion. I want all of that stuff. And God, I am excited. It's just a couple of days away, guys. So the hills are alive with the sound of Train Sim World 4. And yes, we did actually put that into a video. We can't wait for you to try all of the new lands and the new locos coming with the new game on September 26, 2023. And you can pre-order <laughs> the standard deluxe. JD, I can't with JD. And special editions for a special pre-order discount now. September 26 isn't too far away now. And we really, really hope you enjoy everything that there is to offer from Train Sim World 4. We'll see you on the other side. Okay, yes. So the 26th is actually when the game comes out, but the early access is five days before 26. Let me do the math in my head. 25, 24, 30, 21. So on September 21st, which is in, I would say two days from when this goes up, that's when the early access starts. So get your pre-orders in if you want early access. I'm assuming if you pre-order any time in the early access window, you can get the access. Like for example, early access starts on Thursday. If you pre-order on Friday or Saturday, I'm assuming you will be able to just start playing will you be able to does that work is there an early access pre-order window that ends if you don't pre-order early enough i'm assuming as long as you pre-order before the 26th right that's what i'm thinking but that's all that i have to say for this video gosh i feel like i said so much i'm kind of curious to see how long this video ended up even being but i want to thank you guys so much for watching thank you so much for clicking share your thoughts below on what you think on trains and world 4 are you going to pre-order are you going to buy it what are you most excited for take care thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time so long and happy rail set. Coming.